Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Doug, I'm a wildlife photographer from Gilroy, California. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up this thing right here. This is the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. Specifically, I'm gonna show you how to set up triple button autofocus where the shutter button is the star of the show. As a bonus, I'll show you how to set up triple back button autofocus where these three back buttons are the star of the show. So a lot to do, off we go. All right guys, just a little warning. I assume you know what all these buttons and dials do. I assume you know the basics of the menu system. I assume you know what the quick menu setup is. All right, if you don't know what this stuff is, you're gonna be lost in this video because I'm gonna go fast. Don't worry though, I created a two and a half hour video that will take you slowly through all these buttons and dials and show you what everything does through the menu system, through the quick menu. I'll get you up to speed. So I recommend going to that video, which I'll link down below. All right, off we go. All right, guys, here we go. Triple button autofocus. What the heck does that even mean? That means we're gonna set up three different buttons to pull up three different combinations of the autofocus system components when you push and hold these buttons down. And again, the star of the show is the shutter button here, but we're also gonna set up the autofocus on and the star button as well. So let's go. And before we get started, I said different combinations of the autofocus system. What does that even mean? If we go to the autofocus menu, here most of them are. Let's just run through those real quick. So there's four main components of the Canon autofocus system. There is the detection button or the subject detection button. Subject to detect, it's the same thing. That is a powerful button that will detect a bird. Rather than looking for contrast, detail, sharpness, like the old school autofocus systems do, which is, there's nothing wrong with those. They still work really good. When this is engaged, it will specifically look for feathers. It'll look for a beak, it'll look for eyes. It will not look for eyebrows, characteristics of a bird. So that's very powerful to have that engaged. And then once that's locked on the bird, we can set up another component called subject tracking. And they call it whole area tracking servo autofocus. That is subject tracking. And what it does, it locks on the bird and it follows the bird. If the bird takes off flying and it goes behind a tree or two, it'll try to stay locked on that bird. So that's also very powerful. A third component is the eye detection. So if the bird is close enough, we can actually turn this on and it'll detect the eye and it'll put the autofocus motors right on the eye so the eye is crystal clear. That's with bird photography, you always want the eye as sharp as possible. If the bird is far away and you can't see the eyes, then you turn it off. I will show you how to set up a button, the DOF button to toggle that on and off as well. So those are the three main components. Then of course, there's the actual autofocus point also known as the autofocus area, which is right here. And those are eight different sights of a gun is the best analogy for those things. They're like sights of a BB gun, where if you turn one on, your job is to put that sight on the target and then squeeze the trigger. The trigger, of course, is the shutter button. So those are important as well. We have some other kind of strange side components of the autofocus system. You can hit the set button and this weird little tracking frame comes up, but see it pops off, you gotta keep hitting it. So I don't recommend using that. You can also engage a button that will turn on eye detection and tracking at the same time. Again, I don't recommend that one because you have to hold the button to keep those on. I recommend just using the three big ones, the subject detection, the subject tracking, and the eye detection. All right, now let's show you how to set these up. All right, guys, the first button we're gonna set up is the shutter button, and it's really stock out of the box. If you just bought your camera, it's already set up to do this. But if you half press this button down, it starts up the autofocus components that you have dialed up. I'll show you where we set those in here in a second. But that's the first thing to understand. Half press the shutter button and it starts up. And you can see we have eye detection on because it jumped right onto the bird's eye. But you can also see the size of the autofocus point there, also known as autofocus method, also known as autofocus area, also known as autofocus box, also known as sight of a BB gun. It's all the same thing. You can also notice here when I half press the shutter button, 
that disappears because in these latest Canon cameras, the R7, the R6, Mark II, the R8, the R10, the autofocus tracking will go outside the perimeters of your autofocus box. So just know that. And I did a video on that to explain that even more. Uh, but that's the name of the game. So it's already set up. If it's not, let's just go check to make sure. And we're going to use this path a whole bunch. Go to Menu, Little Camera, Number 3, Customize Buttons. Let's go into that by tapping on that. Or you can hit the Set button. And let's put the orange dot on the cartoon camera right over the shutter button. And now we can see, make sure you're in the left-hand menu, not the right-hand menu. That's for movie camera setups. Let's go into that and just see how that's set. So by default, you can see it's set to metering, which we can never get rid of. But since I shoot manual, I don't meter. What is metering? When metering is on and you're in one of the automatic modes and you have pressed the shutter button, the camera will look at the scene and it will set the exposure triangle for you. I never use that. So metering is not important, but it's the autofocus start that is so important. That means it's going to set up the components of the autofocus system, the detection, tracking, eye autofocus. It's going to engage those things. That's what it means by autofocus start. So by default, you should be on this one here. We're going to, when we set up dual back button focusing, we'll go over here and get rid of that. But for right now, that's the way it should be set. All right, half press, and you can see it locks on the bird's eye. All right, great. Now the question is, where do you set up the autofocus system components in this method? Well, they're right in the main menu here. That's where you set them up. So let's go make sure those are set up. And again, this is the way I set it up, uh, but I've tested this. I mean, I have, I have thousands and thousands of shots with it of eagles. This was part of the camera that was involved in that a bald eagle raising red tail hawk story that I discovered. You can check that video out, by the way, if you're interested in a crazy rare story. But anyway, the components of the autofocus system that are engaged when you half press the shutter button live in the main menu, specifically under autofocus under number one. And let's go through these quickly. And again, if you need help, go to my more in-depth video. But AF on, that should be on servo. Right? Servo means that we're constantly autofocusing again and again. If the bird moves, we're autofocusing. If the bird flies, it's autofocusing. If you have it in one shot, then it autofocuses one time when you half press the button and hold it down. If the bird flies, you're going to be out of focus. So you always, always, always want to be in servo. AI autofocus, don't ever use that. That allows the camera to try to automatically detect whether you should be in one shot versus servo. So you always want to be in servo, enough said. The autofocus area, those are the autofocus points. So it depends on what kind of habitat you're going into, uh, which one of these is set. A general one is this expanded autofocus area around. I just call it the, the single autofocus box with helpers around it, or sometimes I just call it the around box. That's a good one to have set up. Uh, I'll show you a way to toggle between those because it's hard to hit the Q button and then go find them and then go pull one up. That's no good, right? I'll show you how to set up the MFN button here in a minute to do that. All right, so that will vary. But the key is we want detection on. So we want to be in animals. Animals includes birds, cats, dogs, and horses. So make sure you're in animals. If you're on people and you go out birding, your your keeper rate won't be super high. It won't be as good. It'll still work kind of, but you won't be happy with it. And same, if you're shooting people, make sure you get out of animals and go into people or you won't be happy either, right? So you definitely want subject detection of animals. And then with these two usually go together. If the detection is on, you want the tracking on. And so set that up right here. And if, you, if you're familiar with the camera, you know a shortcut, how to turn tracking on and off real quickly. How do you do that? Well, not so quickly, but fairly quickly. If you hit the rectangle button, see the info button, now toggles the little flashlight. I call that the little round circle with the little beams coming out of it. I call that the flashlight. So you can toggle it on and off. See, it's on, off, on, off. And those changes are permanent. I turned it off. If we go look in the menu, you can see that it's now turned off. So that's another way you can quickly 
turn that on and off. All right, what else we have in here? Eye detection, let's turn that to auto. That means on. You have the option for the camera to look for the right eye and focus on it versus the left eye or disable. We're going to turn those off as well. All I want is disable or on for autofocus. So you could leave it in autofocus. I like to give it one degree of stickiness as well. So go into switching track subjects. I explained this. You guys will be on number one. Jump over to number zero. Mix the autofocus box. Stick on the bird a little bit better. And then I'm not going to go through this because I did this in my main video, which is completely cataloged. And there's chapters, so you can go find the area. You don't have to watch the whole video. You can jump right to the autofocus area if you need more in this. But make sure your cases is in auto, and I explained why that is in that other video. All right, that's all I'm going to show you how to set up here. So the front button is set up. Let's see how it works. So let's choose an autofocus point for this demonstration. Let's choose around here. That's fine. And there it is right there. Now when I half press the shutter, it engages those components of the autofocus system we just set up. And it looks around and it can't find anything. If I touch this bird with any of these helper boxes, it starts looking. And in fact, it goes outside the boundary of that autofocus box and it's locked right on the eye. And I mean, it's locked on that eye. See, it's not moving at all, right? It's stuck on that bird. I could take picture after picture after picture. But remember, if I release the shutter button, then the autofocus system is stopped. And I find that not to be a problem because usually the bird flies off the stick and I'm shooting at many frames per second, right? Let me show you what that sounds like. Let me set this. I have it set up for single shot right now, but we can fix that real quick usually I shoot right there in high speed continuous plus. So if we lock on the bird's eye, see how it's stuck on the bird's eye? If it, if it loses the eye, it goes to the face, right? But watch this. If I lock on the bird's face, okay, on the eye, here we go. If I take my finger off the shutter button and now repress, I'm out of focus. That's the beauty of back button autofocus. Uh, but I find, really, when the bird jumps off the perch, that's about it. Now the bird's flying in the blue sky. It doesn't look so good anymore. I like the, when the bird is taking off and landing. So I don't have any trouble using the, using the shutter button here as my autofocus start. Before we go to the next section, let me show you a couple quick modifications. Let's set up this MFN button to toggle between the different autofocus points. It's really easy to do. Go to Menu, and let's go to Little Camera. Let's go to number three. Let's go to customize buttons. Let's go find the MFN button. There it is right there. Are we, are we in the correct setup? No, we're in the wrong column. We're in the movie mode column. Make sure you are in the camera mode column. Let's go in here. You guys will be right there by default. If you go down one and over one, there is a direct autofocus area selection button. That is amazing. Hit OK. And now, when I hit this button one time, it changes autofocus points. It toggles between the different autofocus points. So, pretty darn cool. Invaluable. I use this all the time. All right, great. So, that's a little trick there. Let's also quickly show you how to set up the DOF button. Because sometimes I can't see the eye very well, and I don't want it looking for an eye if no eye exists or it's just impossible to see. So I want to quickly turn that off. I can use the DOF button here in the front. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that. If not, I'll flash it up. But there's the DOF button right on the front there. That thing just toggles the viewfinder to show you the true depth of field and we can set that up in the menu so we don't even need that thing. So let me show you how to set that up to toggle eye autofocus on eye autofocus off. Go into menu, little camera number three, customize buttons, and let's go find it. You have to scroll for a while to find it. There it is. Let's go in there. You guys will be set right there to the top upper left hand corner. Those are the default settings. So when we get in here, there's two different eyeballs. There's one right here. So that's eye detection plus autofocus. You don't want that one. That's another way to engage the tracking, but you have to keep holding the button down. And the way I'm showing you in the menu is just easier to do. So don't use this one. 
use that one, eye detection. That simply turns eye detection on, eye detection off in the main menu. And those setting changes are, well, they're not permanent, but that changes the main menu settings. Okay. So now when I hit the DOF button, eye detection left, right, eye detection off, eye detection auto, eye detection right. Okay, that's ridiculous, right? We don't need all that. So let's limit that menu to fix that. Go to menu, autofocus. Number four is the limiting menu. And let's go fix all this stuff. So for eye detection, let's go in there. And these are all checked. So I don't want all these on. I just want to turn it off. And auto means on. It'll find whatever eye it can find. And let's turn off right. And let's turn off left by unchecking them. Click OK. And these guys are off. And now when I toggle, now we have eye detection off, eye detection on. Auto is on. Off, on, off, on. And you can even see this in action, right? If I half press the shutter button while I'm on the belly of the bird there, it's got the face. If I turn eye detection on, it's got the eye, right? If it doesn't grab it, just pump that button. Sometimes you have to pump that a couple times to get it to stick. Now when I take a picture, that's going to be a beautiful shot. And you can see the autofocus box right on the eye. And if you don't know how to set that up, I did that in my other video. I'm not going to show you how to show where the autofocus point hit right here for time purposes. Great. So we have our shutter button set up as our button number one. Now, why would I need another button? Aren't we good? I mean, we can change autofocus points. If the bird goes flying, uh, I can I can keep it in. And I have limited some of these because you can go back to that menu four and get rid of some of these. So there's a great one. Where now the, where's the autofocus box? The entire screen is the autofocus box. So that's great for birds in flight. If I don't like that, I hit that and now I have a tiny little spot focus. And I can go down and get pokey here. Or can I get pokey? And this is where the problem comes in. It's trying. I think we got pokey there. But it's it's struggling. And if you have a different autofocus point on like this one. See how it jumped up on the owl there? That's no good. So I can't shoot pokey. So what do we do? Now we need to set up a different button. And we can set up the AF on button to do this. So why is it jumping on the owl and not pokey? It's because detection has found the owl and the eye detection has found the eye. And so it's not, it's getting confused. So in this scenario, we need an old school autofocus point where the autofocus system does not go outside the boundaries or the outside perimeter of that box. And how do we make that happen? We have to turn off detection and tracking. Okay, so how do we do that? I mean, you could go into the menu and we could go back to number one and we could, that takes way too long. So we need to be able to do that quickly. How about if we set up the AF on button to do that like that? And that's exactly what we're gonna do next for this scenario where the autofocus is messing up and jumping in the owl. So let's show you how to do that. All right, guys, go into the menu. And let's go to little camera, number three, customize buttons, tap on it or hit the set button. And let's go find the AF on button and see what that is doing. Oops, I went by it. There it is right there. Not here, movie mode, stills mode. Let's go into it. And there it is. So by default, oh look, it starts the autofocus. It's just like the shutter button. But here's the difference. There is an info detail set, guys. If you remember one thing from this video, remember info detail set is a very powerful menu. Let's go into it by hitting the info button or tapping on it. And you can see we have another menu system in here. And these are override menu settings. So whatever you set up in here will override whatever you've done in the menu. Whatever is checked here overrides its mirror image over here in the menu, so very powerful system. So let's set it up. Let's. Our problem was detection and tracking was kind of wrecking our attempt to take a picture of the little horsey. So let's go down and check detection and turn that off. So you always have to do two things to make this work. You have to check it and then you have to set it. 
by default it is off so we're all set there but maybe it won't be maybe somebody used your camera or you monkeyed around with it but now it's checked so when i push down on the af on button and hold it down subject detection will be turned off why because these settings are overriding the settings that you made in the menu okay that's not good enough you have to do tracking as well so let's go up to whole area tracking make sure that's set to off and it's not going to work yet because we didn't check it check it and set it check it and set it now be careful when you come out of this menu or it won't work you have to hit menu and then you have to hit OK don't just hit the shutter button or they won't stick alright great so now when it's struggling I'm half pressing the shutter down and it's not working it's jumping on the owl to fix that problem I just push AF on and we're locked on pokey no problem I can push the shutter down take the picture and we can see that we're right on pokey there no problem all right so that's one way to set it up I usually go a step further notice I did not set up the autofocus areas or the autofocus points and therefore I can still control those here let's use this autofocus or let's use the little spot autofocus box so if I put that on pokey and I press and hold down the AF on button that's the autofocus point you can use so that's one way you can do it personally I always like this to be my emergency button usually when the autofocus system isn't working I want to mash this button down and I want the tiniest little autofocus box to be on and that can change but I, I like to I don't want to have to fool around with hitting the MFN button either so if we go in let's go back into that button go find it it's right here go into info detail and there's autofocus areas right there so now it's checked let's set this up to automatically pull up the autofocus point that you want for whatever terrain or situation you're going in and let's just use around here just to make it different but you, usually I use that one right there but you can choose whatever one you want let's choose that one one point so we can see a little bigger box click set menu set again be careful again coming out or it won't stick and now so we have the autofocus point is set up from the main menu now we have a spot autofocus box which I called up from the main menu settings when I push the autofocus on it jumps to that box because we just set it up to override the main menu settings so now we have a single autofocus point box and we can set that right on pokey and it's not going to jump outside the perimeter of that box because we have detection tracking turned off see how that works all right guys that's two and that's probably all you need for 95 percent of your outing but I always set up a third one I set up the star button and personally I like to set that up so when I push the star button detection and tracking are turned off but I just have a different autofocus point come up that's a little bigger so let let me show you how I do that so same place customize buttons let's go find the star button there it is right there let's go into that by default you guys will be right there okay so you have to go over to start autofocus again right next to it there's an autofocus start and metering and this is a different system so it's not going to override the settings in the AF on button great let's there's an info detailed set let's go into that and set it up however you want but for me this is how I set this one up again I turn off subject detection set it let's check it to make sure it's on off and it is let's go up to whole area off great we're all set I didn't check it though and then for an autofocus point I like something a little bit bigger on this one so if my smaller single autofocus point wasn't working I can go to one of these flexible zones let's just use number three just for the heck of it be careful going out great so now if I hit and hold the star button we have a little flexible adjustable zone there and we can and let me set, snap that in the center by pushing the multi-controller straight in and let's show it to you again okay great and you can lock on that and yeah you remember how to adjust that let's adjust that flexible autofocus zone real quickly so hit the rectangle button right here 
Right, and now choose the autofocus zone you want to adjust. The only ones that you can adjust are these flexible zones. I only have number three, I have the other ones grayed out. And then quickly hit the rate button. And now we have two new button assignments here. There's the shutter button. So if we hit turn the shutter button, it'll adjust the width of the autofocus box. And then we have the quick control dial number two here that will adjust the height. Great, so we adjusted that box and that will stick. If I hit the star button now, that'll stick. Okay, and it doesn't matter what the main autofocus box is. Let's choose this one. This will be overridden when I hit the star button. Why is it overridden? Because we set it up in the Info and Detail tab. All right, guys, that's all there is to it. I mean, most of the time, you're just going to be using the shutter button. You don't like the autofocus point? Hit the MFN button. I mean, you could go the whole day using this box if you want. Don't like the box? Adjust the size of it like we just did. If there is a situation where you want to get pokey and you're in that box, oh, I'm not getting pokey very good, then just mash down the AF on button and it turns off detection and tracking and it pulls up that single autofocus point. Right? If you need a little bit bigger box for whatever reason, go there. I hardly ever use that one. All right, guys, in this section, I'm going to show you how to set up triple back button autofocus, not front button autofocus like I just showed you. So here we go. All right, and just so you know, I, did, I reset the AF on button and the star button back to factory reset. So I took all the stuff off that we just did. So what does back button autofocus even mean? It means that you can't push down the shutter button and start the autofocus like we're doing right here. You turn that off. Why would you want to do that? Well, one reason is because if you want to compose in the frame, if you're shooting a bird that's not moving and you half press the shutter down and you want to push the bird over to the left here, if I take a picture and I release the shutter button, now it's off. And usually it'll jump back on if, if detection and tracking is on, so it's not that big of a deal, but sometimes it doesn't. And so it's nice to have the autofocus start set up on the AF on button so it's always on. As long as you push that button down, you can push the shutter button down and release the shutter button and it doesn't lose focus. It's always locked on autofocus. It works good with a bird that's flying. And let's just set it up and I'll show you more. All right, so the first thing we have to do is turn off the autofocus start from the shutter button. So that's really easy to do. Go into our same pathway, menu, little camera, number three, customize buttons, and we're right on the shutter button. So let's go into that and let's just turn it off. Right now it says autofocus start. That means it's going to start up the whatever you have set up in the menu. Let's turn that off. Just move over here. So now it just meters and for us it doesn't do anything because our metering is doesn't work because I'm in full manual mode, which I always recommend. Okay, set it. Great. Now watch what happens. If I half press the shutter button down, Nothing. It doesn't detect anything, even if I'm on the bird here. Nothing happens. All right, so now let's make it do something. Well, guys, by default, the F on button does what it says. It turns on the autofocus by default. So if I push that down, there we go. We started up the autofocus system. It locked on the owl's eye. It ignored the boundaries of that autofocus box. See how it jumps right up on the eye? What if I want to take a picture of the wing? It ignores it. It finds, oh, it got it there for a second. Well, it's not reliable. See how it jumps up on the eye. So, yeah, that's that's a problem that we need to overcome. But the point is, we did start up the autofocus system here. And guys, you can leave it like that. The rest of the components will be taken from the main menu. And some people just like it like that. But now let's look at the difference. So if I push AF on down, and I recompose, let's say let's push the bird over to the right, I take a picture, release the shutter button, it stays locked on the owl's eye. So that's very cool. We never have to regain focus. If that bird is flying and I'm shooting and releasing, I'm feathering it to spare the buffer so the buffer lasts, lasts longer, it stays right on that eye or right on the face. If it can't find the eye, it goes to the face. So that's pretty cool. So why don't I use that anymore? For me, if I'm hand-holding a heavy lens, I can't bend my thumb enough to 
to hit the button. I have to hit the button with this part of my thumb like this. And sometimes it's okay, but I can slip off it. And it just it's just clunky for me. And for me, just half pressing the shutter just works better for me. The shutter button is bigger and I may lose focus for an instance, but I have, I mean, you could see all my pictures of birds in flight. I don't have any trouble with just using the shutter button. But some people, maybe if your fingers are more limber or if you're always on a tripod, then there's no problem hitting this button. So it's up to you guys. You can play with both of them. I can do either method, but I prefer the the shutter button being my autofocus start. If I was going to use triple button autofocus, this is the way I'd set it up. So I would set this one up to give us a spot autofocus and turn off tracking and detection. So let's go into customize buttons. Let's go find the MFN button and see by default. Remember default setting is always up and to the left. Autofocus start is on. But let's go in and make this do something. So let's go into the info tab and let's give it an area. For me, I've just always set it up with a smaller spot autofocus box. And let's go whole area tracking off and subject detection off. And you have to set it up. If you want triple back button autofocus, you have to set it up like this. Eye detection doesn't matter. If these, if tracking and detection are off, the eye detection is not going to work. So you don't even have to worry about setting that. Be careful again when you go out of the menu settings. Great. So now when I hit this button down, it starts autofocus and it gives me an old school autofocus box. All right? I can move it around with the joystick. Okay. And you can you could probably go most of your day just using that one. But there's going to be a time when you need a different autofocus point. So let's set up the second back button to give us a different autofocus point. So let's set up the star button. Let's go to menu. The same pathway, guys, little camera three, customize buttons. Let's go find the star button. There it is right there. By default, you'll be an AE lock. The name of it is the AE lock button. I just call it the star button. So there's an option to start, autofocus start right there. We've been there before. And now let's go into info detail set. And again, personal preference, you could set it up however you want. Uh, but let's give us an autofocus area. Let's make it bigger. I usually put that one right there around for a, a bigger autofocus area. And let's make sure whole area tracking. So this is subject tracking is off, which it is. And make sure I check it, check it and set it, check it and set it. Subject detection, got to turn it off for this to work. And it is off. Great. Be careful coming out. Menu. OK. Set. Great. So we AF on button gives us this little autofocus box. Okay, want a bigger box? Go to the star button. Now we have a bigger autofocus box. Great. And I've explained all these autofocus points in my other video. Now what about the third button? Let's set up the rectangle button to turn on detection and tracking and let's give us a whole area. So this is my emergency birds in flight button. So if I'm out shooting birds most of the time, I'm on this one, or I'm on the spot focus, or I'm on the around autofocus box. But if a bird starts flying, I want to quickly be able to jump on this and make it capture the bird. So let's set that one up. Customize buttons, the same pathway, guys. Let's go find it. There is the rectangle button. Let's go in. By default, you'll be right there. So there is an option to start autofocus right there, metering and start. But here's the only drawback. There's no info detail set, right? So all this will do is start autofocus. That's why we had to save it for the last button. This is the only way this system works. But now it will start up the autofocus system. Okay, that's great. Let's go out of here. So just to prove it, let's hit it now, and it starts the autofocus system. Well, how do you control the other components of the autofocus system? The tracking, the detection, where do they come from? The autofocus point. They just come from default. From They just come from the old default location, from the menu, autofocus number one. 
So that's where you control the settings for the rectangle button. And right now we have it set up for tracking on. We have detection to animals. Eye detection is on. And autofocus area is whatever you want to change it to. Let's just change it to something else. Let's change it to this one with four helper boxes around it just so we can show it works. So now when I push that down, that's the box that comes up and now it's tracking. Okay, it's as simple as that. So uh, to specifically show you the way I have this set up for birds in flight, I just changed the autofocus point to whole screen. Now the whole screen, and let me show you in the Q menu so you can see it a little bit better. So I have it to this one right here. The whole screen is now the autofocus point or the autofocus area, or the autofocus box, whatever you want to call it. The whole screen does the job. And so if a bird flies, if the bird is sitting on the tree, I can just hit the F on button. Great. Or I can hit the star button, a little bit bigger autofocus point. If the bird takes off flying, it's really hard to keep the bird on target with these. And there's no detection and tracking on, so you're not going to be able to get the bird flying. But if I just jump over to the rectangle button, see how it locks right on there? Right on the bird's eye. That's all there is to it, guys. That's triple back button autofocus. Now, some of you notice a problem. How am I going to change the dimensions of the adjustable autofocus zone if I've assigned that to do something else? And that's a good point because I can't use this button anymore. So I have to do something a little different. What I do is I assign this rectangle button to the movie on button. I never want to hit the movie on button uh, because of reasons I have explained before. If I want to go to movie mode, I go to movie mode. There's an emergency movie start button here when you're in stills mode. I don't want that on. So I can assign the rectangle button to that button. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. So let's go into our usual path, little camera, number three, customize buttons. Let's go find it. It's real easy. There it is right there. And let's go into that and just assign that. There's AF point selection. And now the movie button, when I hit it, it pulls up the flexible zone adjustment box window. Go to number three and then hit the rate button. And now we can change the size of the box. Right? So there we go. All right, guys, that'll do it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Please consider giving me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.